Have you stopped to wonder who Jesus would vote for? Most of us probably believe he would vote for the person we're going to vote for. Or maybe some of us, conditioned by our emotional makeup, feel shamed by the question and assume he'd probably vote the opposite. I ask the question not to bolster or to shame, but to invite a more careful consideration. In fact, as I consider it, it leaves me with three thoughts and one word of counsel. Number one, Jesus wouldn't vote. I'm not saying we shouldn't vote. I'm saying he wouldn't. I mean, he wouldn't have, and we need to own that. He wasn't an American. He didn't live where people had a vote. He lived under an oppressive Roman government with a Jewish puppet ruler. He didn't get a vote. To us, that seems unfair, but there's no indication that he saw it as an injustice, like a violation of his human rights. He didn't ask for or demand or expect to have a vote. And he didn't fight the ruling class. He didn't muster up a militia. He didn't join a freedom march. He didn't launch a campaign or host rallies. He concerned himself with ministering to common folk and challenging the religious leaders. But his interactions with Caesar and with King Herod were nil. And with Governor Pilate was not at his own initiation, and he only interacted with him reluctantly. He didn't seem very interested in the political tensions or solutions. I mean, it should be silly to say this, but it bears reminding, Jesus didn't watch Fox or MSNBC. He didn't listen to your favorite pundit. He didn't share political memes or argue about policies. And it's not that no one in his time led militia groups or attempted to overthrow the government. In fact, his fellow Jews wanted and expected him to do just that. And his answer was, my kingdom is not of this world. Number two, Jesus wouldn't be defined as Republican or Democrat. And he would even resist tribal affiliation with conservatives or progressives. In the religious ruling class of his time, there were Pharisees and Sadducees, which we could recognize as conservatives and liberals, respectively. Jesus' teachings were closer to the Pharisees' understanding, but he rebuked them roundly for their pervasive hypocrisy. He threw them under the bus. He wasn't a Pharisee. And he was very compassionate and progressive in his ministry, but he rebuked the Sadducees for their mistaken theology. He threw them under the bus. He wasn't a Sadducee. He himself took neither mantle. He was neither conservative or liberal. Number three, Jesus wouldn't worry. He would have an eternal perspective that includes, without equivocation, his own victory and eternal reign. He's overseen every ruler to ever occupy any palace, hut, or white house, or to carry any scepter, sword, or pen. He has overseen all of it, meaning he has seen over and through all of it, and not once has he wrung his hands and furrowed his brow thinking, this is the most important election of our lifetime. He sets up whomever he will to accomplish whatever he will. Now, we may squirm under the scriptures, but according to Romans 13 and 1 Peter 3, we could say it that the Lord's candidate has never lost an election. That doesn't mean he approves of everyone who has ever held office. Of course not. But he is not worried about this one. And those three considerations brings me this comfort and consolation that I give to other followers of Jesus. It's more than point number four. It's actually the conclusion in the matter. Jesus is Lord. I believe we should vote well as a matter of conscience, but I also believe some should not vote as a matter of conscience. Either way, whether we vote or not, and no matter what else we do, let it all be done in the conviction that Jesus is Lord and with confidence that our choice is a true and thorough reflection of that faith. Let's love God with all we are and our neighbors with all we have and even our enemies as that is the most profound imitation of Christ. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Honor the emperor. Let nothing in your speech or conduct violate love. And may peace be your witness and assurance that Jesus is Lord and you are part of his kingdom and you are found to be in Christ. Amen.